Hi, Nikki Davy here. This is the first in what I hope will be um, a few network automation videos. I initially want to demonstrate how easy it is to get started with uh, network automation. You don't need to be a programmer to get up and running really quickly, especially with a tool like Ansible. But before I get to Ansible, I want to just describe how I set up my home lab. Um, so I've got a MacBook Pro with 16 gigabyte of memory. And there's numerous ways to set up a home lab, whether it be Cisco viral, even physical routers and switches, etc. But what I've used is uh, EVNG. Um, and if you have a look at their documentation, you will see that it supports uh, numerous hypervisors on different platforms. Um, so initially I was looking to use VirtualBox because VirtualBox is free, but you'll see from their system requirements, it says the VirtualBox is not supported. So uh, it, it doesn't work. So I wasted a bit of time on that. Uh, what I have, what I since done was um, installed uh, Fusion 8 on my MacBook. But if you're running Windows, you can just as easily download um, Player, which I believe is free, and uh, install the VM. But um, when you go to um, actually the, the install step, it's it's really simple. You just go to the download the image. So there's there's two options. There's the EVNG Professional, which is um, a paid for product. And then there's the free version, which is uh, the community edition. And if you select one of the mirror sites, you will see that the latest version of Eve is um, available via zip file, usually around one gig gigabyte. So I've already downloaded that. So I can go to Fusion now and create a new VM and show how easy it is. So just import an existing virtual machine. And um, I just choose the file on my laptop and you'll see that I downloaded the zip. I uh, unzipped it, it creates this directory and in there I have my OVF file. So I select that and then I just install that. So it takes a little bit of time. So we finish that and then it starts up. So once it starts up, um, you get an option to log in with the default credentials, which is uh, username root password eve. It's a Ubuntu Linux box. And when you log in uh, for the first time, you go into the setup screens that asks you to change the root password and also how you want to configure the IP sessions of, of um, the box. So we give it a host name, uh, a domain name. I select DHCP uh, because of a DHCP server on my LAN. And um, I just skip NTP. It's a direct connection to the internet. Um, I don't use a proxy. And it's as simple as that. We've got an EVNG box installed. So once it fully boots up, uh, I need to log in, work out what IP address it's been assigned, and then we can browse to that IP. So let's just let it boot up. Log back in. Actually, I've changed the password, haven't I? And because it's Ubuntu, we use the IPA DDR command. So if I just pipe that to grep and grep for my local network, then I'd see what IP it gets. So it's been assigned 192.168.0.17. So I should be able to browse to that. And when you log in via the browser, it uses different default credentials, which is admin and eve and i always select the html5 console so that when i click on a, a router icon when i create a lab it will it will um give me console act access uh, via 
a separate tab rather than having to always revert back to um, <clears throat> my um, uh, SSH client. So we log in and we can add a new lab. And then you have the option to add an object and you can see in here that Eve supports lots of different vendors and appliances and um, at the moment we don't have any images downloaded to the Eve box uh, if we did we would have um, some of these options highlighted in blue that allows us to select them so uh, if we just go back to the notes on the Eve website and we go into their documentation they have some great how to's for each of those vendors and how to how to install the image so for for bin files that we would um, um, boot Cisco routers running iOS from we select the Cisco iOS on Linux option and in there uh, it gives us the instructions on how to do it so basically when you when you get a, a bin file it's just the same bin file that you would um, uh, download to a router or a switch you have to um, transfer it to the evng box using filezilla or uh, wincp to this particular directory and then follow um, another couple of steps so if i open filezilla i already have an ios bin file and if i log into the server And connect and then it, it the directory it told us to log um, to inst install the image is um, opt unit lab add-ons IOL bin so now we can simply drag the file over and just wait till it installs or rather transfers And now we've transferred a file so i use the terminus ssh client so if i create a new host i can ssh directly into my evng box and we can verify that that uh, file has been transferred successfully and complete the next step Okay, so if we change directory to opt unit lab add-ons iol bin we'll see that the image is there now so if we refer back to the notes you'll see that the next step is that we must fix the permissions using this opt unit lab wrappers unl wrapper command so let's do that so slash opt unit lab wrapper is unl wrapper minus a fix permissions and then the final step it's saying that we have to generate the license key and that's done via um, a python script that is easily found online that's in recommending here to google for it and um, there's it's um, very easy to find I've, I've seen seen it on lots of different websites and um, I have it in this particular website here so it's quite a short script so um, if we just copy this oops And create a script say called gen key.py and we can paste that in
and then run the script. And now we have generated the license key. You'll notice here that it says add the following text to tilde slash dot iourc. So I wasted a bit of time on this. Um, tilde in Linux refers to the home directory. So if you cd tilde at any time, you revert to the home directory. Um, but I did that and it didn't work. And what I eventually done was referred back to um, the notes on the Eve um, website and you'll see that they actually tell you that you must put it in the bin directory, the same directory that the image is in, in a file called IOURC. So I, I got caught out by that, that, that cost, uh, caused me um scratch my head for, for a while until I worked it out. So if we just go back to uh, Terminus and uh, we copy this and now create that IOURC file. Then that's all we have to do and now we're, we're done. So now we should be able to add an object. So if we go in here, we will see that Cisco IOL is now highlighted in blue and we can add a router or a number of routers and um, simply like that. And uh, something that I usually do as well is um, I um, connect it out to my local LAN so that I can SSH from Terminus into the, into the device. And you do that by adding a network and selecting management cloud and that bridges out to your local LAN. So if we do that and then just connect to router one. So on gig zero slash zero and we save that and now start router one. And if you remember, I selected HTML5 console when I was logging in. That means when I click on router one, it opens up another tab and I get console access. So it's now just going to boot up. It'll go into the initial dialog box. So we can log in. And now the router is booted up. So if we configure um, that eth zero slash zero with DHCP, So set it up for SSH, so that means we need to give it a proper host name. So router one will do uh, an IP domain name. And we can see that it's been assigned 0 0.67. So we'll give it example.com. Generate the key. configure a username and password. So just give it uh, Cisco privilege level 15 password Cisco and then configure the VTY. I also configure privilege level there. Enable 
Cacete. So that should hopefully mean that we can now SSH from terminus. So 0 slash 67 was its IP. So just call it router 1. Cisco, Cisco. Then hopefully I should be able to get direct access. So now I can SSH directly to my um, my new router. So that's that. That's simply how you 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 set it up. Um, you install EVNG. So I've actually got already got uh, another lab so if i just um pause this one um and just start up my my main lab then i can show you exactly what i use just a simple lab for testing out um ansible on a couple of routers and switches so when this um boots up I'll be able to just check the IP address here as well so this box is on um, zero excuse me zero dot one thirty nine so uh, if I create that one So HTML5. And this is my this is my lab that I use. It's just a simple um, core with two routers and one particular AS, and then what would be a small site of, of two routers and a switch. And uh, I create a management switch and I've got a management network. All of these devices here are on one slash twenty-four flat network and one of the interface connects out to a Linux box where I have installed CentOS 8 and on that CentOS 8 box I've installed um, Ansible. So if we again go back to the um, how to's you'll see that there is um, a good good instruction on how to set up um, your own um, Linux host machine so if you go in there you will see that it tells you that the image goes into a different directory. It's in the UNET lab add-ons uh, QEMU rather than um, IOL bin. And they have some all um, some Linux Im images that they've already created that you can um, download like Debian, CentOS, Ubuntu, whatever you want. So the one I chose was the CentOS 8 and I followed the instructions which are really simple. You uh, um, using FileZilla again you transfer the file into this directory you um, uh, untar the file and fix the permissions like before and then you follow these instructions here it tells you to um, watch out for number of CPUs, RAM etc but I found that with the image that I used CentOS 8 I didn't have to change any of this information and then down the bottom it gives default um, username and passwords for when you're setting the box up. So uh, you'll notice here that CentOS 8 isn't listed, but the CentOS 7, um, all of these passwords, uh, the, the username and password is the same, so the, these will work. So that, that's quite simple. Um, but if we go to the Eve topology, once you have done that and you go into objects, you're now going to have an option to select a Linux box and if we just uh, select another one as, as I said these options uh, these configuration parameters here are exactly as was shown in the documentation so I didn't need to change anything so I just click save 
So if I just create another one and connect it to the management switch on its Ethernet zero, um, and in fact, uh, actually, if I just delete delete that, what I want to do is just show you how easy it is to install Ansible. So if I just cut, cut, bridge it out to my network instead, and then just start this Linux box. And like the, with the routers, if you click it, it'll open up another tab. And because it's the desktop version, we've got the GUI. So that will just open up. So that'll build up. So once, once it's um, installed, you log in with the credentials on the website, which if we could just go back again, um, it's a uh, user and test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. can see here that I should have um, an IP address assigned so it's 192.168.0.241 so um, Again, I can SSH to that. This time I'll just do user at 192.168.0.241 and do a quick connect. No, that didn't work. I'll just create another host. So I uh, just call it test Linux. So one nine two dot one six eight zero dot two four one, and the credentials are user and test one two three. So if that hopefully I should be able to log in. Yeah. And then to install um, Linux, I need to um, install the EPL repo because in the in the default CentOS eight uh, repo it doesn't include Ansible. So we first need to install this. So we simply do use the the command DNF for for installing packages. So previously in CentOS seven and before. The package was called um, yum, but they've, they've moved to DNF in, in newer releases. So sudo to give us root access and um, DNF and install this and the minus Y select yes for every question that I, that's asked. So it'll ask me for my user. So I'll test one, two, three again. And it should download that repo and install it. So it's installing now and that's it now we have the repo that allows us to install ansible so for ansible it's sudo again dnf install ansible and it will install the latest version of ansible again similar process I didn't do minus y here, so I may get asked. Um, yep, yeah, so say yes to that. Download the package. So 
downloading all the dependencies for um, an Ansible install. And then yes to this one as well. You can see why I selected minus Y in the first option. And you can see here it's downloading Ansible 2.9.5-1, which is the latest version. And numerous uh, Python libraries. And that's it. And then to verify, we just do Ansible dash dash version. And you can see it's Ansible 2.9.5. And it's as simple as that. So that was just a run through of um, my, my lab setup and how I installed Ansible on a VM inside my lab. So I I just added this second one here so I could show you how I install Ansible because I already have it on this box. It really is that simple. But this is the lab that I'm going to be working off in the next video when I show you some simple um, Ansible um, scripts to get started really quickly. So that's it. Thank you very much.